Okay, so, hey guys, welcome to my first official, um, Let's Play video. So this is the, you know, maybe the launch of my new Let's Play Games in VR series. In this series, I will not be speaking necessarily as an educator, but just as someone who enjoys VR gaming. Um, and I thought a good game to start with would be Subnautica. So Subnautica is a... Um, it's a game that originally was created for PC, for just, like, normal desktops, uh, like, two-dimensionally, and then later was ported to VR, um, I think even, like, a couple years after it was released, and that was, that was still years ago, even since then, and I've actually played it before. I've played Subnautica when it was on desktop for... Man, only like a couple hours. I didn't get that far into the story, and it was in like early access at that time. And then I played in VR, actually, just, well, this morning, when I first tried to make this video. This is secretly my second attempt, because, uh, you know, I tend to, tend to, to just jump at things like this. And my, my first version of this was, I'd say, fairly good. But, unfortunately, my OBS settings were just untenable for, you know, posting online. So, this is episode 1, version 2.0. Here's my, my hour and a half practice that, you know, I'll release one day as episode 0. Now, today I am going to be doing just a quick, you know, I assume quick, but with games like these, you never know how long you're in. Sometimes I'll take off my headset and it'll be like, you know, several hours later. But, um, what was I saying? Uh, anyways, this is Subnautica. I have actually, like I said, never filmed a Let's Play before beyond that one practice one. And I've never actually seen a Let's Play video either. So, we're gonna make it up as we go and we gotta go on this journey together. Subnautica, the storyline, as I can ascertain so far, is that I was, you know, an employee on a spaceship, and uh, it crash landed. Right now we are experiencing the crash landing. Oh my gosh. So I do want to warn you, uh, because this is a let's play of a VR game, you know, the entire, the camera is tied to my head, so... Viewers can, you know, sometimes get motion sick, so be careful about that, is what I'd say. And if it makes you feel any better, I too might get motion sick in this really, uh, you know, kind of wibbly wobbly first person game. Which is kind of why it's funny that the first Let's Play I'm doing is ocean themed. Because then it's, you know, we can get seasick. Very fourth wall. Um, storyline wise though, I am, I was on a spaceship, and now I am on an escape pod, and I'm possibly the only survivor of that spaceship. Uh, in this game, I mean, it's kind of a pretty typical survivor game, survival game. I have a fabricator here that I can put in raw materials into, and it will then, you know, turn them into created materials. Wow, this is a beautiful ocean planet that I've crash landed on, and it is just absolutely breathtaking in VR. I I don't know if it translates to the 2D video that you guys are watching on, but I mean a lot of VR games tend to be just beautifully, breathtakingly immersive. And I hope you guys get a chance to try this. So I, since I did just very recently played the first hour and a half of this game. I'm going to speed off into, you know, what we're supposed to do, which is, you know, essentially at first just collecting stuff. I'm going to run around picking up uh, some fish. The fish are used to eat as well as to turn to water. And you can see in the bottom left of my screen there is my health along with my food bar and my water bar and my oxygen bar, which at this point in the game is very small, so actually my very first priority will be to fix that. Um, I do know 
I need some acid mushrooms, and I will need some minerals. That's the first step to updating my character. Uh, so, Subnautica? Let me see here. What do I want to say about this? Subnautica, it's got a lot of customization. It's, it's similar to Minecraft in that sense. And actually, it shares a... a you know, an unusual characteristic to Minecraft, which, like I said before, Subnautica and Minecraft were both released originally 2D and then later ported to VR, and that's it's pretty rare. I mean, there's, like, Fallout 4 and Skyrim pulled off the same thing, but not a lot of, not as many games as I would like have done that same trick. I think there's, I think there's a lot of potential for that. I'm trying to get off the top of my head. Like, Borderlands 2 did that, and... You know, would it kill developers to just throw on a second screen, I assume, and that's all it takes to turn a game into VR? Well, this game it may be a good example of... Oops, I wasn't watching my oxygen. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, you're gonna see uh, that in the first, you know, few minutes, very quickly, I can get an extended oxygen tank, which is... Such a breath of fresh air. Really extends the time you can be underground. Um, but yeah, Subnautica is... So what some of you may have already noticed is that unlike many VR games, Subnautica cannot be played um, with the, the touch controllers, the, the grip controllers that I traditionally... You know, that we traditionally use for VR. Instead, Subnautica... You know, because it's a port, you have to use either an Xbox controller or, like, you know, some sort of PC controller or keyboard and mouse, which is what I have devolved into. Um, but it's not... I mean, it would be a lot better if I used my touch controller. Not gonna lie. So, look at that. I already got enough stuff for my standard oxygen tank. So you guys are seeing uh, secretly a speed run of the first... The first hour. You, my my first attempt at this was not pretty. Not just because, like I said, it was choppy as heck in the video, but because oh, there's the um, I did not know what I was doing. So here I come off as like a really competent gamer. So I gotta appreciate that. Right now I'm drinking some water, getting some food. Excellent. I need to make more food. I can see. All the food in this game looks so delicious. Mm-hmm. So delicious. Quick. Quick. Okay, excellent. So I've got more oxygen, and that means my next step is going to be a flashlight because you know a lesson that i learned at terrible cost my first time playing this game was that at night the world gets dark well i mean i i knew that but i i learned that this game has a day night cycle which i'd completely forgotten about from my previous playthroughs and although i have some time yet since again this is a seed run of the first hour more or less uh you know it'd be nice to have that in my pocket so what I'm going to be doing, again, is just kind of reclaiming all the the initial achievements of my first video, and that is rebuilding all, you know, like the basic tools. This game, you need a, well, these are like manatee things that have acid, so they, they're pretty intense. You gotta watch out for them. Um, let me think, what else do I want to say about this game? This game is beautiful, uh, more beautiful perhaps than other VR experiences, just because I think underwater, you know, the the environment of being underwater lends itself to just absolutely breathtaking environments. It's also a little bit scary because, you know, um, I'll tell you, I have a little bit of a 
a little bit of a deep fear, deep primal fear of the the dark depths of the ocean. Um, I've gone, I've been like snuba diving, which is kind of like scuba diving, and it was not my favorite activity, you know. Not that I want to discourage anyone watching this from loving the ocean and scuba diving and being brave, but let's just say this game is, you know, my my first hour in this game was a lot, lot scarier than the casual ease that you're seeing in this playthrough. Um, I do look forward to, you know, once we catch up to the to the present, and you guys can see me learning new things and exploring new things. Because I think that's, you know, that's obviously the, one of the, that's the appeal of exploration and survival games like this. And I think I'm actually almost caught up to where I was, which just shows, like, the world of difference that experience makes. Um, see? There's a life lesson there. This is... This is still partially educational. Click. I remember my, my first playthrough, I couldn't figure out how to put away the fish, so I was just swimming around with a fish in my hand the whole time. It doesn't slow you down, but it's kind of annoying. Kind of... Don't eat this one, he's kind of cute. Makes me wanna... No, I guess I shouldn't name them. Okay, let's turn out some, some things. I need to create a high capacity O2 tank, so we gotta keep an eye out for... Oh, no, I actually have enough of that. Let's get two pieces of glass. Like I said, this is all uh, a review of previously learned materials at the moment. Which is fine. This game, you know, like any good survival game, has so many hours of depth. That's right. We're gonna have a lot of puns in this, so hopefully everyone's everyone's ready for this. Oops. High capacity O2 tank. There we go. And just like that, I'm able to breathe twice as long underwater, more or less. And I want some fins. I need to get rubber, which I need. I now know where it is. Last time was a bit of a struggle in it. Okay, scanner, battery, and titanium. So. To make a battery, I need mushrooms, so let's get two mushrooms, and I didn't bring any titanium. Okay, so I'm making a, a shopping list. Oh, oh my gosh! That is never not scary. I gotta say, not only was that starkly, I forgot that it was gonna be nighttime. Um, but man, that, that one fish is kinda, it just, okay, well that's a sort of fun and games we have waiting for us in this, in the rest of this series. Let's go off and find a couple of mushrooms, quick, for their acid properties. Acid and copper to make a battery. And I believe I was craving titanium. So let's keep our eyes peeled for those rocks on the side of the wall, especially in caves. And... Oh, there we go. There's something, I mean, okay, I gotta say for, for all the, you know, corner cutting that a game like this takes by not having the Oculus controllers, it is so perfect and natural to, to swim around like this in VR. Like, sometimes, you know, it's, it feels like really artificial that my head, in a game like this, that my head would be the... Uh, directional controller and like flying around and stuff, but I, I just feel like it captures that smooth lighting for the water feel so well. So, wow. Um, let's keep going. Man, I gotta tell you guys, this was so much scarier when I was playing it for the first hour slash you know, and before it was nighttime too so I think that also makes it scarier um
I need titanium and something else. What was what else was on my shopping list? Get back home. Click, click, click. Earlier, well, okay, I guess. <laughs> Earlier for me, um, I was talking about. I wonder if there's any educational potentials for this game and the answer to that is it's hard to say like you know is it ever worth it to teach ecology through a lens of artificial creatures maybe because it's like you know interesting for students but then it's also like isn't that a waste of time and why would i teach you guys a food web but then have the food web be like some completely you know, invented fantasy world. Hmm. Okay, I right. filled my belly up to 107%. Wow. That is so cool looking. Like, I'm surprised there isn't a market just for like, cool VR I mean, I guess there is. I've seen, like, cool VR meditation games, but I just haven't bought any. But I can see the... I can see the appeal. Um, and... I need rubber, so... I have already done this adventure once, but I will now do it a second time. And that's the adventure of visiting the kelp forest. Kelp forests, in real life, are really terrifying in my opinion and in game they are only slightly less terrifying um but i've done this i've done this very recently i can do this it is pretty scary i gotta say and that's probably you know to this game's credit that it captures the eerie spookiness of a kelp forest. That's a good keyword. If anyone watching this doesn't know the word biome. Biomes are like, you know, different... Oh man, I shouldn't have started a vocabulary lesson without having a full definition right. I think a biome is essentially a you know, a uh, territory of, of land with specific animals and plants that live on it. So, you know, common biomes are like tundra, uh, there's like rainforest, and there's like lots of like subcategories, I, I think, in biomes. Different forests, different types of deserts. So, in this game, we can expect many different ocean biomes, which I assume are still all salt water, but like different depths or acidity or something. Okay, I got fins. I'm 15% faster. Nearby, 15% more dizzy as we play. Okay. We are just flying through this. Lots of rubber. Let's get, oops, I saved the game on accident, but that's not, it's not the worst accident. Okay, I still need batteries and titanium. I think I put titanium in my bank, so let's just make a battery, which I also hope I have the ingredients for in my bank. Copper, and I have my batteries, and one titanium. Huh, really thought I would have more than that. Well, let's see what I can make. First click here, click, we got battery, and my scanner. Oops, I could have had a knife or a scanner, but I chose scanner on purpose, not just because I was clicking too fast. 
Because, you know, in life, it's knowledge is the, the most important weapon. So now I can scan stuff as I go. Oops. So I just learned that's the drop button. There we go. Scanning stuff as I go, which is just a fun virtual scavenger hunt where I can scan stuff to learn about it. It's like the bladder fish, unusual herbivore. Ooh, see? I so much education. This herbivore is a an animal that only eats plants. Like a vegetarian. Mostly defenses. Bears little resemblance to other life forms. It's a semi-permeable bladder. See it's it's bladder that these sacks on the sides are able to filter air and seawater into its body. Cavity through a unique membrane which surrounds its spine like a bladder. This allows it to remove and consume organic particulate caught away and adjust its buoyancy. And you know, its assessment is edible. Oxygen may retrieve be retrieved from the bladder and outer tanks on consumption. So that's interesting. I wonder if I can eat them raw to get air. And it says this membrane has applications as a natural water filter, which is why they are the floating water bottle floating water bottles that I can squeeze into my fabricator. Um, in fact, let's eat one raw. Let's, let's do a little bit of science. I don't have any. Oh no, I dropped some. Oops. So that's how you release them. To eat them, you consume it. Oh, and oxygen went up. That is, that's pretty cool. So, you know, Maybe I'll make an episode of this where it's a challenge episode and I can only stay underwater by ravenously being an oxygen vampire on these bladder fish. There we go. I mean, they have water, air. I think they have, I also got food eating nothing raw, so it, it does it all. Oh, these are maniacal exploding redfish, which I had a traumatic experience with in my first playthrough, so you guys gotta see me learn from that experience and not die to them. That's nice. Shuttle bug? Let's learn about this guy. Shuttle bug is small enough to be a little that's common scavenger. That means it tends to eat dead stuff. Three mandibles, excellent. Three legs. It's a waste recycler presence to indicate nearby cave systems. So much so much learning. Gary fish. Presumably named for, you know, a developer, right? Is, it, is that what we're guessing? Quick, quick. I have still gotten, like, very little titanium. In my... In episode zero, I swear I had tons of titanium. It can't be that... can't be that rare. Huh. Oh, I can hear it. I can hear it. It's coming. Run. Okay, there you go. I can hear it again. Keep running. Don't turn around. Ouch. Okay, so that one hurt me. And you can see, like, one, the audio cue is really important to avoiding those things. Those scary clownfish things. Although, they more look like a real-life clown than, you know, Finding Nemo-style clownfish. Um. Oh, well, it is too easy to... Get lost in the rocks here. I'll tell you, this would be like my nightmare if it was in real life. Like, just the vaguest possibility of getting trapped underwater like this. It's not, it's not pleasant. It's off scan, that's right. It's... Okay, I got some titanium. Let's head back to the ship and fabricate some... some things. I wish people used the word fabricate more frequently. It's a good... it's a good word. We only ever use it with the word lies. Have you noticed that? But we should just start substituting it for... for making things. I'm gonna go fabricate a cake. Time to go fabricate my... What else is something people make? Make my bed. Fabricate my bed. Okay, well, it doesn't. It's not a perfect synonym. Squeeze out a couple of water bottles. 
and craft some cool supplies. In this case, a friendly neighborhood. Uh, where was it? I thought I had a knife. There we go. Okay, and you know, to reassure any any parents watching this video, I will only be using that knife in self-defense. This is a, a family-friendly playthrough. Okay, got this. I got a knife. Oops, got a knife. Got a scanner. Got a fire extinguisher. Hopefully with unlimited... Oh no, it doesn't have unlimited. Okay, I guess we'll keep that in mind. Oh no, wait. The power that I see is unrelated. And a flashlight. So, the last thing I did in my original video so that we're fully caught up is I created my sea glide. A sea glide is like in a underwater, you know, motorcycle or, uh, what's another word for that? Underwater glide device. And to unlock it is the real use of my scanner that you're seeing on the right side, which is I have to find broken pieces of it and then scan them. Nope, that's, that's not what happened last time. Oh, okay, so that's unrelated. I need to find the broken sea glide, which I stumbled into last time, but this time can deliberately find if I can navigate underwater, which is not easy since everything looks like this. This isn't that, it's just more salvage. I actually never saw the middle salvage before, and I don't know what it's for. Oh, presumably it's... Maybe it's like instant titanium. Okay, where was that seaglide? My goal was to... To just fully catch up before I ended this real episode one, but... Maybe we'll end it here. And we'll leave the mystery of the sea glide for episode two. Where, where was it? It was in some sort of box. Man, I feel so confident my second time through. Which, you know, again, if you make a mistake or waste an hour and a half of your life creating a laggy episode zero, it's not really a mistake. If it's a learning experience. Hmm, where? I did not learn where the sea light is, though, so... That'll be... That'll be coming soon to a... To a Let's Play near you. Oh! Here it is! Here it is! Okay, we're good, we're good. We, we don't have to cut off this video early. That's one piece, and there was a second piece. I feel like nearby. Maybe in this box over here. Why does it let me self-scan myself so much? Okay, these are not the boxes I was looking for. That shark thing over there is pretty scary. I'll tell you that. Hmm. Well, this is new. Okay, see, look, we've, we've achieved original content in this video. That feels good. And the sea glide, my my underwater scooter. Is that no no no? That could be it. Oh, it's garbage, garbage. Oh, there it is. If this isn't it, then I guess this video will be an exercise in always leaving the audience wanting more. You know, ending on a cliff. Oh, never mind. Okay. On a cliffhanger. No cliffhangers today. We found Sea Glide. So, now that I've scanned it, I have unlocked that recipe. And I think I will scavenge the materials, you know, next time.
Thanks for being with me. Let's end on a cool overhead shot. How do I climb up? Dun dun dun. This has been episode one of Mr. Coomber's Subnautica Let's Play. In honor of this episode, I will release this fish back into the water. Ooh, this, this is how we'll, you know, we'll sacrifice, I mean, uh, not sacrifice, return the fish to the water for good luck. There we go. That's, that's probably enough, uh, enough water gifts. Oh, look how happy he was. Now I feel bad about eating them. <laughs> Thanks for watching.